Hi everybody, it's so good to see you here. It's um, honestly my pleasure to be um, starting this group up. I'm so thrilled that all of you have agreed to come along with me on the journey and hopefully we can share some really great information together and um, make a difference, you know, get you guys on the road to recovery. I know how hard it is to be dealing with spasmodic dysphonia. So my heart goes out to you so much. And um, this is like a passion for me, for me um, to spread this message because it was the most agonizing thing that I dealt with when I um, got sick with many other things as well, um, some Lyme disease symptoms as well as just run of the mill heartburn and heart palpitations and um, just neuropathies, things like that, um, that I was dealing with. Um, so I guess I should just start off by telling you guys a little bit about myself. A lot of you might not know who I am. So um, my name is Kathy Merkel Roddy and I um, am now a certified holistic health coach, um, but I wasn't always, <laughs> and I sort of came to that passion through my illness, and so that's been a beautiful transformation and something that I, I did not know that I felt so passionately about. I spent the majority of my life, since I was about 17 years old, as a professional singer and entertainer, and so I just, um, that's pretty much all I knew until around 2017, I started having some issues. So um, this was just in the beginning stages. I had gone on a trip and caught the flu really bad and um, wound up losing my voice really bad in a laryngitis kind of situation, not a neurological situation, but a, a laryngitis. And so when I was starting to recover, then lo and behold, I got another strain of the flu. So I got knocked down like twice within three months of each other and that set me on a path. So pretty much both times my, I, I got tremendous laryngitis and almost um, couldn't really do my job, my singing um, career. Um, and then when I started to finally kind of recover from that second bout of the flu, um, I my range was way different. Like it was just like a different kind of thing. So that's when I sort of started my journey with the ENTs and you know allergy testing and you know CT of my sinuses and all sorts of things that they had me kind of doing. And then I started speech therapy as well because I wasn't quite presenting all of the, um, the um, symptoms of spasmodic dysphonia yet, but I was noticing I was having control issues when I was trying to sing. And um, so I spent, you know, a good three, four months in speech therapy and that sort of thing. And so finally, towards the end of that, um, time, the speech therapist would call in different ENTs in this practice to come just observe me and I got scoped a bunch of times and stuff like that just to see what was going on. And so that's when finally they decided that I did have spasmodic dysphonia and referred me to a movement disorder clinic to potentially get Botox or whatever. So that is when I decided to take matters into my own hands. So. I did not feel that Botox was going to be the thing for me. I just knew instinctively because um, it's basically putting food poisoning into your body. And so I knew instinctively that somehow the, the ramifications of some lifestyle ch choices I was making, I was... Um, in this bad habit, I was drinking on a daily basis, I was caffeinating myself, and I was doing all sorts of kind of stuff just to prop myself up because 
I was struggling. My adrenals were tapped out. I didn't understand what was happening in my body at the time. So I was just using these other things. I had tremendous allergies and, and, and stuff like that, um, chronic sinus infections. Um, and so I was using a lot of over-the-counter medications, things like Tylenol sinus and Mucinex and Zyrtec. And, and then of course, throw in the digestive stuff. I had a lot of digestive problems as well. I was taking Zantac twice a day and um, I was just sort of like a pharmaceutical cornucopia of over-the-counter medications. Not to mention I had been on um, birth control for 20 years straight and so all of these things add up to our toxic brew that's happening in our bodies. So um, basically we have to eventually start addressing all of that, but I did not know that yet. So I'm jumping ahead. Um, so I continued to kind of stumble through um, my struggles for the next, say, six months or so after that um, initial diagnosis. Um, and then something happened. I had, I experienced a traumatic event in our family and that pushed me from teetering. I was like kind of teetering. I still had pretty good use of my voice speaking wise. It was when I was singing that I was struggling more so. I was just having an, an issue kind of intermittently. So then suddenly this trauma happened in our family. Then suddenly it became a all the time thing where I just couldn't speak normally anymore at all. So um, <clears throat> that took me about four or five months of that. Um, and I was trying all sorts of different things. I tried hypnosis, I tried acupuncture, I tried Reiki, I tried pranic healing, I tried, um, what are some of the other things I tried? I was like pulling out the stops. I was trying to do some meditations and stuff like that along the way too which of course is good, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that later. But at the time, I also, um, I forgot to mention that when that traumatic event happened, not only did my voice cease to exist in the way I had known it, um, then also I developed a ton of other like neurological symptoms and, and stuff along with that. So along with that came this constant spasm. I had a spasm from my right eye down through my neck, into my abdomen, down to my hip. So it was just constantly vibrating. You couldn't see it from the um, outside, but I just felt this constant like vibration in my body. I had this tremendous sensitivity to cold. I just was freezing cold all the time. I, um, let's see, I was sensitive to light and sound. I could like, to exert myself to try and speak, I would start feeling physically ill. I would get this tremendous headache and a nausea that came along with it. Um, so that, it, it, like, I could go on and on about my neurological stuff because there was like a lot of nitpicky stuff. I would, constant thirst. I had um, this dry mouth. I had dry eyes. I had a blurry vision. I had... Um, Anyway, uh, you know, a neuropathy in my foot <laughs> that wouldn't go away. Um, I had back pain. I had all sorts of stuff. So um, about four or five months into my journey, I got sent a video of medical medium talking about celery juice and how celery juice helps to eliminate um Epstein-Barr virus in our bodies and helps to rebuild our hydrochloric acid in our stomachs. And um, anyway, he was talking about the implication of Epstein-Barr virus in particular being the root cause of a lot of things, including a lot of neurological things. So I was, I was piqued. My interest was piqued because I knew from age 12 when I had gotten mono that that made a tremendous impact on my life. Um, from that time when I was 12, I suddenly had intermittent fatigue. I had intermittent brain fog for my, my whole life, really, depending on how run down I was and how my immune system was 
was handling things, you know, and like when I was pushing myself hard, then, you know, sometimes those symptoms would flare. So I was well aware that Epstein-Barr had been playing a, a role in my life. I just did not know to the degree that it was. So I decided to just like find out more and more about this medical medium stuff. So I ordered the Liver Rescue book at the time was his newest book. And so got a hold of that and um, started looking at all sorts of blogs or, you know, any sort of person that would has tried it or I just wanted to hear what their experience was. So I started, you know, just searching YouTube or, you know, whatever, looking for people who had done, done it, done medical medium. Of course, I didn't find anyone with spasmodic dysphonia, um, but I did find other people that had other symptoms of, that I had. So that was kind of like the blessing in this whole thing for me was the fact that when all of my symptoms came on kind of suddenly after that traumatic experience, um, I knew that it was all related. And so the good news is that in his books, um, he's got like more than eight books now, um, and he tends to focus on the symptoms and afflictions that apply to the majority of people. So the things that are most common, he addresses. Unfortunately, spasmodic dysphonia is not really that common in in the scheme of things. So um, he has not written about that particularly. But um, I knew from my own other list of symptoms that if I addressed at least those other symptoms that this might work for my spasmodic dysphonia, which turned out to be correct. So that was actually such a blessing for me because the fact that I was so sick helped me actually identify the fact that, you know, the body as a, as a whole is um, a, a, a connected system. It's like a series of systems that are all connected and you can't have one breakdown in a system and expect all the other systems to do completely well. And that's one thing that um, our modern um, Western medicine approach to things is kind of faulty because it doesn't treat us as whole people. It treats us more as, okay, you go to the, you got a knee problem, you go to the orthopedic doctor. You got a insulin problem, you go to the endocrinologist. You got a neurological issue, you go to the neurologist. And so each one of them like just looks at that one aspect instead of um, looking at you as a whole person and, and the fact that, oh, if you're, di you're having digestive issues, yes, that's going to bleed into other areas. That's going to make you less able to absorb your nutrients. It's going to affect your food choices and things like that. Sometimes when we're having a lot of, you know, gastro problems, we tend to avoid certain foods. Even now that I know what I know, of course, you know, we tend to avoid some of those healing foods because they cause a healing reaction when we eat them. So we're like, oh, that doesn't make me feel good. It's because it's rooting out the, the pathogens that are at the bottom uh, root cause of that. So, so today um, I wanted to talk some more about um, the root cause because that is the thing that um, I think is so important to know what, what the root cause is. So once you understand it, then you can understand better what you need to do to do something about it. So I started my medical medium journey. Of course, the, the Epstein-Barr virus was played a, a role in it. Um, according to medical medium, also heavy metals, such as mercury, especially mercury, um, plays a part in a lot of neurological things, things like MS, things like um, uh, Lyme disease, of course, um, Parkinson's, um, ALS, um, a lot of these neurological things are related to a certain strain of the Epstein-Barr virus. Depending on what strain it is, you know, um, there's over 60 strains of Epstein-Barr. So similar, like we've, we've just been through a pandemic where we watched variants come out on a daily basis <laughs> for the past few years, right? 
So the Epstein Barr virus is no different than what we've been dealing with more recently. And um, so in addition, I knew I had shingles in my body as well because um, I have the back pain, the neuropathy, some other things, the headaches, a lot of that is shingles related stuff. So it's just the, the right amount of a, a, a toxic brew between the a certain strain of Epstein-Barr that likes to go to the central nervous system, specifically the vagus nerve. Then we have you know the heavy metals, depending on where they're located and how much of them you have. And we know we can inherit them from our parents in addition to um, having them you know via other things we encounter, toxins, pharmaceuticals, all that rigmarole, we can get them exposed to them. I mean, those silver fillings that we all used to have in our teeth, those have mercury in them. So it's not, <clears throat> not that hard to get exposure to mercury for sure. So anyway, so um, I knew that I needed to work on getting the, my pathogen load down, which means um, cutting off this food supply for those pathogens. So what do they like to eat? They like to eat things like eggs, dairy, gluten, corn, soy, canola oil, and pork. So those are the things that are definitely inflammatory. It's funny because um, in a lot of circles, functional medicine circles, even regular doctors now are very aware that gluten and dairy can be inflammatory to the body. And so it's becoming more and more widely known. Now, what they don't know necessarily is why it's inflammatory. It's because it's feeding the bugs in there that are causing the inflammation. So um, it's kind of you know interesting. They, they understand that it is, they just don't know why. So. We're, we're smarter than the average bear because we know why, ha ha. So I knew I had to get rid of the, the pathogen load. I knew I needed to try and detox out the metals in my body too. So um, I, I started, I jumped right in on, on the whole medical medium thing. I went full ham. I went from, I was doing a keto diet, which I could go on and on about that. That's a popular thing to do these days and I thought I was doing a good thing for myself when I did it but what I realized is that I, I kind of overburdened my liver when, when I did it so uh, beware the keto diets um, <clears throat> so I went straight from keto to vegan and, and, and you don't have to go vegan to do this but I just um, knew that meat is one of the things that kind of slows down the healing process because it puts a tremendous strain on the body to try and digest it. So it makes it so it it um, it just drains the energy that could be devoted to other things and also slows down the digestion. And if, if our um, livers are compromised, which if we have neurological, we have spasmodic dysphonia, our livers are compromised and then our bile production is not going to be as strong in order to digest those meats and then eventually move them out of our body. And so they just kind of sit around there and kind of stagnate and kind of rot in our gut, which is, I know, gross, sorry to be TMI, but um, a lot of us have a lot of rancid, like old stuff in there that is not beneficial to a clean a clean golden, which can help also, um, you know, pr promote absorption of the nutrients that we do get. It Then it also doesn't provide an environment where the bacteria can hide and proliferate, um, which is what we want to avoid. You know, we want to avoid that sort of thing. So um, <clears throat> anyway, so... You know, I jumped in too fast. I don't recommend that for anybody. I um, jumped right onto a cleanse and my body was nowhere near ready for that. So I kind of, you know, made things a little bit more difficult for myself in the fact that I went too, too quick. 
and I was very sensitive too because of all my neurological stuff. So whenever I would, um, you know, do a cleanse or, you know, even when I would drink the full heavy metal detox smoothie, um, I would get woo, a lot of vertigo, a lot of dizziness, a lot of brain fog just from the, the healing stuff because it was too much for me at the time. So it's, it's, it's all about finding a balancing act with this whole healing dance. That's the thing, it's a cha-cha. You go two steps forward, one step back. You know, it's not like a, a linear thing where you're like, I have my celery juice and my heavy metal detox smoothie for every day for three months and I'm like boop, 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 getting better, better, better. The, the journey is like you're better and then, oh, you have a setback and then you're better. It's like, it's very hard to um, really know um, what to what to think of it sometimes because of all that stuff. And then you throw in um, the other aspects of this whole journey, which it, I mentioned the trauma that happened to me. So I had PSD from that. I had... Um, you know, I had not so great practices even prior to that, where I had this kind of ne negative self-talk that was happening in my brain all the time. I think we all kind of have a little bit of that. So I didn't know how to deal with that. And, and then the constant fear. I just was, I was, I was kind of a fraidy cat kid from the, the start. I was always just kind of a nervous person and also... A little bit of low-level anxiety going on and also just <coughs> in this constant low-level fear sorry <coughs> I have a piece of smoothie in my throat I think right now I, sh I chugged a big smoothie right before I got on here so forgive me um, but so I've had to learn to manage that too had to learn to revamp my thoughts so that they're not keeping my adrenaline going 24 seven. That's one thing about being in that fight or flight um, that a lot of us are in, we don't even know we are, and it, it causes so many um, issues because the adrenaline that we produce when we're in that state keeps everything inflamed anyway. So um, the, the nerves, the vagus nerve, all of that, that's why, you know, our voices can get worse when we're under stress or when we're upset. Um, because the, then the adrenaline's kicking and it further inflaming the nerves so that what the, the goal is to calm them down. Calm them down so that we're not giving them further injury with every, every time we have an emotional upset are the nerve itself, um, some of the little root hairs can come off of the nerve. It's like a, a string of yarn. So you have these little hairs popping up off the, the string, which is the nerve, and then the pathogens can nestle into where those little um, root hairs are poking out. So they have a new place to kind of hang out, which is what keeps it constantly inflamed. So when we're just in that kind of constant fight or flight, then we are constantly giving that nerve some inflammation that it does not need. And we it doesn't get a chance to repair because the pathogens are, we're feeding it, you know, the bad food, whatever, the pathogens are having a heyday. Then the adrenaline, not only is it inflaming the nerve itself, but also it's keeping our immune system suppressed. So we have this like lack of, you know, soldiers coming to help us in these situations. Um, and so we are stuck with this chronic situation. So learning to manage the emotions and the nervous system. So finding tools like, I don't know if you guys have ever tried tapping, which is like one way to kind of um, <clears throat> trick the body in a way. It's like short circuits or, you know, running a... Um, a little pathway that is like a, a, a shortcut um, for the nervous system. Cause I, I was in fight or flight. I was in a constant state of PTSD. And when you, when you are in that, that constant state, your nervous system can't turn back off. It's almost like it's so on edge and it's so used to being on edge that it doesn't know how to turn itself off anymore. So your autonomic 
nervous system is almost like non-existent and you're in sympathetic the whole time. You're just like, so things like tapping, you know, just, it's not super, it's super easy. It's not, you know, not too hard, but it does do like a, like a little short circuit of the old, um, problems and just, it calms things down, which I don't know. It's so interesting to me. It's just that almost like, um, if you were going to, I guess, um, if you had like a, a thing that was on an auto, um, auto belt and then you, it's got hung up or it got stopped and you had to manually like pull it along and get it back on track. That that's kind of like what this does. It's kind of like one of those situations that helps you to, um, just re reboot without even doing anything emotionally at all. It's a physical like re reboot, reset. So um, that's one of the things, you know, the deep breathing, the, the box breaths or the inhale for four and then the hold for seven and the exhale for eight, those types of things. Then of course we have things like you can go outside and put your bare feet on the earth, you can sit in the sun, you can watch the birds, all of those things just like calm our nervous system down, which is what we all need to do. So um, it's, it's, an, it's important to address all of it because we're, again, we're whole beings. We're not just an immune system, just a neurotransmitter. We're this bundle of energy which um, also is something that we have to learn to address. The energy aspect comes from so many things. So the food we eat has energy. So there are certain foods like the, the fruits and the, um, the vegetables that are raw, those are higher energetic like th foods to eat than eating a dead like piece of meat, let's say, or even like a processed thing with harmful chemicals in it. That's even worse. That's like so low on the energetic like spectrum because it, it, it does nothing to really bolster you up. It just drains you because you, your body's now having to deal with these toxins and these weird fake ingredients that it doesn't know what to do with. So those are just a couple of um, things. So um, as I went into my journey, I definitely um, had some struggles. I wound up working with a practitioner about a year into my journey because I, I realized I just was kind of stuck. I was feeling like, I just didn't understand that it was gonna take time. Nerves take three to five years to recover sometimes. Now I was very lucky because um, I got my voice back after two and a half years. So that's pretty good on the scale of healing. Um, so I think that the journey itself, I knew something was changing in my body even before my voice started coming back. I could, my digestion improved almost immediately. My allergies and my sinuses immediately great. Um, I went off of all medications and, um, everything after about two months into my journey, because I was, you know, I had jumped in, did a cleanse, but I still was in this mentality of like, oh, I'll just, I'll take a cheat day and, and do my thing on this day. Oh, I'll have a couple of drinks at dinner with this one, this one time. And um, I just realized that I was kind of shooting myself in the foot with that and not giving it a full chance to fully see if it was gonna work, if I was kind of dabbling. So again, finding that balance, cause you don't want to like go crazy and, and do everything all at once and, and drastically shock your body. But then again, you know, for a period of time, it probably will be necessary to eliminate all of those, those inflammatory foods for a period of time. So I have never um, dabbled with going back to the troublemaker foods. I did eat a, um, an ear of corn over the summer just to see what would happen, you know, just because that was one of my favorite things from the, from, um, the summertime, like, you know, foods. 
Um, and I tried to source it locally where I, it wasn't GMO. Um, so, but I noticed when I, when I ate it, it didn't affect my neurological so much, but it did give me my stomach kind of like a weird feeling. So I was like not doing that ever again. So, you know, you sort of learn that that is not like, you know, gonna be my thing to do because I want to feel good. I, I'm addicted to feeling well now that I do. So, um, basically, it's it's my passion now to help people figure out what they're doing, help them navigate this journey. It was not easy by any chance, and I'm not even actually promising that it will be easy because um, there's it's new. And change is hard for all of us, you know? It's like um, deciding to take a stand for our health and, and moving it forward and reclaiming aspects of our lives. That's hard to do. Because um, it's, it's leaving behind a lot of the old habits, a lot of the old parts of ourselves that are not serving us anymore, but also change can be just difficult. So, that's the thing, as you are trying to do this, if you decide you're gonna embark on this journey, my advice to you would be just be super gentle with yourself and be kind and allow yourself to know that you are gonna give it extra, you're gonna give yourself extra love and extra care during this time and acknowledge that what you're doing is hard because that's the thing. Sometimes we are we're like, no, I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm gonna do this come hell or high water, and that sometimes is not a very loving approach to ourselves because then it makes us feel like we have nowhere to turn because we're sort of not sympathetic to ourselves, and then of course you have everybody else on the sidelines giving their opinions. That's the thing, you know. Everyone's gonna want to give you their opinion about this. So it's up to you to say, well, hmm, what I've tried, I don't know. I don't know how long any of you have been dealing with this condition. I'm imagining that a lot of you have tried a lot of stuff. So the reason that they haven't worked per se is because they're not addressing the root cause. So the root cause is the pathogens, the metals, the emotional regulation, so I think you need all of it together. I don't think that you can just uh, do one thing and get permanent results. I think that you have to maybe go at it from all the aspects so that you can then produce like long lasting results. For me, like once my voice came back, it was back. So I don't have to deal with it intermittently, like not there or whatever. So that's like the important thing. So I don't know, you know, we all have, we're all on our own journey and, the, and this may not be for everybody and that's okay. It, um, it's a sacrifice. I'm not telling you that it's easy. I'm telling you that it's worth it if you're willing to do the work and, and also just dig in and decide that you're doing it. Because once you make that decision, it's like everything we want in life is waiting on the other side of one decision that we make. So that was the thing that I, I did for myself. I, I made that one decision to give this a couple of years to see how it was going to work before I decided to go looking elsewhere. And I, I was pretty strict about not letting other modalities come into my purview while I was doing it because I was, I was like, I'm not going to know if this is working or not, if I'm throwing everything but the kitchen sink at it all the time. So, um, yeah, this is a journey. It's a journey, but you, you know, you can do it. I know it's hard to dig deep and just find that why. Why do I want to do it? For me, my voice was everything because I was, I had spent my years singing, you know, as a, that was my career. And then also my personality, <laughs> I'm a chatter. So it really, it just changed who I was in general. And I was desperate. 
I was desperate to do whatever it took to, to get it back. So for me, the sacrifice was worth it. And it didn't feel too hard because the way I looked at it is nothing tastes as good as feeling well feels. So no matter what I was presented with, and trust me when I say, once you give up these foods and you give yourself plenty of glucose and minerals on a daily basis, hourly basis, um, you don't, you really don't crave the, the other bad stuff anymore. So, and, and you know, you just gotta find little tricks and ways to, to make it happen for you. So um, I'd say, you know, if I was gonna give you guys just one takeaway from today, um, start small, start with a, one thing you can do right away is just adding in lemon to your water or lime if you prefer, or cucumber, if you don't like citrus for some reason. Um, that's already giving you more minerals and uh, helping your body identify the water so that it is um, easily absorbed versus the water that comes out of the tap the way it is has been chemically treated and is not as uh, readily usable for your body because your body is like, what the heck is this? This is not what I'm used to. So when we give it more uh, minerals, that it can identify and wants to take the, the water in, can utilize that. So we can start hydrating because we're chronically dehydrated and when we have toxins in our body, we're even more dehydrated, which is, you know, seemingly weird. I was, I drank eight bottles of water before I started medical medium, probably. Like when I was a singer, I would chug the water all the time. Um, and I was always thirsty though, because what I didn't realize is I just had those toxins that your body wants to utilize that water to flush out. And so it's not getting to some of the cells also. So um, just some lemon lime water, um, That's and then also increase your amount of water, because I'm guessing that you're probably not drinking enough, <laughs> just knowing what I know. So, um, and that's one thing. And then just adding more fruits and vegetables in. That's the thing that um, is important to, to remember to do because as we're trying to take things away, as we're gonna try and start eliminating the, the inflammatory foods, we need to make sure where there's plenty of the other stuff because at first your body's going to be like, no, 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 I want the pizza. I want the, you know, whatever. So you gotta make sure you're giving it, you know, the, the good stuff so that you know that um, you're, you're feeling satisfied. You're feeling like, okay, I, I'm not hungry and I, I feel energized by my food. So it's, it, it just becomes more like a psychological thing of like, you know, I know I'm not supposed to have pizza today. So, um, and by the way, you can make a healthy pizza. So, I mean, there's lots of, you can use a potato crust or, you know, make it out of chickpea, whatever. There's ways to around it and you just don't put the cheese on there. And then it's delicious anyway. So you learn little tricks like that. So, um, yeah. And then just becoming mindful of, you know, how am I feeling today? Am I, er, am I like tightly wound? Am I like upset about everything all day or what? Just start noticing and then become like the observer. And if you, if you can snap yourself out of it, do what something that you enjoy right away or do something that you think is funny watch a cat video do i don't know we all have our little things that we like to do that make us happy every day so we got to do more of that as we're making this transition give ourselves tons of love and some grace like a nap or whatever you feel like you're tired take a nap don't fight it don't prove to the world that you're gonna do your to-do list instead a better use of that time would be to rest and that's not a waste of time. So anyway, those are just a couple of takeaways. And then, you know, start thinking about the fact that sometimes our thoughts, our mind is playing tricks on us. It's not telling us the truth. So when we're, saying, we're assuming gloom and doom or some impending terrible thing, or, you know, I know I used to build myself up into this frenzy before I'd have to leave the house and go to Walmart or something. And like, I would be so worried I'd have to talk to someone 
and I would just like build this up into this huge thing. And so it became a huge thing in my mind because then of course, inevitably I would have to talk to someone and they'd say, what? I can't, I'm sorry, what did you say? And then I would be triggered and I would be like, Rah! you know, um, just like coming out of their feelings, just so frustrated and so mad at myself at the world and just feeling damaged and feeling not like whole because I was somehow not enough or not doing the things that needed to get done um, in terms of being able to communicate. So these are all just little tips you guys can can do. And I, I believe that you can do it. I, I, I will go on a limb here and I will say, anybody watching this video can do what I did. And so you just gotta start believing that. I believe it. I'm here to help. I'm here to show you the way and trust me when I say I care so much. I want each and every one of you to have maximum healing. I am, I am invested. I want you to be too. So we'll see you next time. I'm going to um, try and do one of these every week so we can talk about different subjects, but um, welcome to the group and I'm so happy you're here and let's see if we can get this healing rolling along. Okay, we'll talk soon. Bye, guys.